The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. I must admit that I scoffed just a little bit when I read our first reading, maybe even rolled my eyes. I thought, this is overly optimistic. There's no way it could be true. Acts chapter 9. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. Was at peace, I thought. Get real. We live in an era today in which retaliation and gamesmanship seemed to be the operative way of behaving. Juicy headlines intended to incite curiosity, but are all too often predicated on the notion that people people are not as noble as they appear. We've watched our society in many ways polarize and fragment over one issue after the next. Mistrust, if anything, seems to be the operative way of the day, not peace. But let's bring it closer to home. We are too often a church that reflects divisions, not unity. We label ourselves as left or right, conservative or liberal. We sometimes think more about what divides us than what unites us. We all too often find ourselves getting caught up in just trying to be right, correct, absolute, in thinking less about honing our skills towards discipleship of Christ. And as a result, in many times and instances, we find ourselves surrounded by other people who just serve as an echo chamber, reinforcing what we already think to be true. And that is precisely why we need this reading from the Acts of the Apostles so badly. To be reminded that division and discord that we intentionally and unintentionally surround ourselves with is not in accord with God's vision for who we are. While peace may be our lived experience, may not be our lived experience at this precise moment, our reading from the Acts of the Apostles gives us an insight into why we may encounter this world as we do. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples. 
but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Don't get me wrong, these disciples had good reason to think that. Before his conver conversion, Saul was complicit in arresting and condemning those who would follow Jesus. It would have been far easier to walk back after that encounter with Saul, soon to be St. Paul, and say, can you believe that guy? He thinks he can fool us. He thinks we're going to believe that he now is a follower of the Christ. And in truth, they probably said something to that effect. But thank God that that is not where and how the story ended. Imagine, what would the New Testament look like if all of the following readings did not exist? Letters from St. Paul to the Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, Timothy, Titus, Philemon. In all of those readings are very important nuances to our Christian faith on subjects like redemption, what constitutes the body of Christ, the true nature of Christian love, openness of Christianity to all people, Jew and Gentile alike. We see with this extension of trust, with this openness to what God has in store, with the possibility of redemption playing itself out, that transformation occurs. Division is not and will not be the final arbiter of our existence. I want to return from this passage, though, that gave me some pause. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. My brothers and sisters, the only fear that we are called to in our lives as disciples of Christ is precisely what is outlined in the Acts of the Apostles. Fear of the Lord. A reverential respect of God. Such ultimate respect that we are led out of love for God to reject sin, to turn away from old states of life, and instead to pursue his will, to ultimately submit what we might consider as a threat and instead move toward it, engaging it with the hopes of ultimately encountering peace, not division. But for that to happen, for that disposition to occur, for that transformation to result, we need to have a love that listens with the hopes of understanding and not condemning. A love that responds so as not to win in argument, but to advance in truth and wisdom. A love that acts out of respect for the common good, that is mindful that, to quote St. Paul, if one part of Christ's body suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all parts share its joy. In all honesty, I resonate with this passage mostly because I find those divisions and those temptations arise in myself. I find an encounter that I stew on past hurts and slights. I find myself picking sides. I find myself calculating about how to be more strategic in the future. But if I'm perfectly honest with you and myself, those approaches that ultimately divide have not brought me the peace that I long for. They have not brought me the joy that I hope to savor in Christ. And so, together, as a community, we need to begin to think about new ways, new habits, new methods of approaching age-old problems. And interestingly enough, how the wisdom of a 2,000-year tradition once again speaks and serves as a remedy of what our culture at this present time needs most. A way of peace, a way of peace that begins in the hearts of every man, woman, and child that says, these ways of behaving that sow division, retaliation, discord, vengeance, are never going to bring us the peace that we long for. Jesus says to his disciples, I am the vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. 
and everyone that does he prunes so that it might bear good fruit. Jesus reminds us in this passage of who we have been grafted onto through our baptism. He is the vine. We are the branches. To genuinely pursue the path of peace, it will require of us that we allow for him to prune us, to challenge us to forgive, to express compassion, to understand the perspective of another. And why should we do such a thing? Why should we risk so much? Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Because without me, you can do nothing. My brothers and sisters, while the way to peace starts in the hearts of every man, woman, and child, it is made possible by our understanding of who we are and whose we are. We are first and foremost children of God, men and women made in the image and likeness of God, grafted to the vine of Christ through our baptism. Our vocation is not and will never be one of division and discord. It's not who we've been created to be. We cannot accept that as normative. We must strive eagerly to seek after greater gifts and spiritual fruits with the belief that through that effort, God will provide us the grace necessary ultimately to be transformed. So, may we always remain in him so that we might bear good fruit.